was given a card that uh, I was asked to read out loud. Uh, the front of the card says, people like you make it easier for people like me to believe there's goodness in the world. Thank you so very much for all your help so our veterans had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And it, it's uh, from the name of the group. I can't read the right. Helen Moore. Helen She's Moore. She's the, the president of the um, veterans. Okay. All right. So thank you, Carp, for all that gave to the veterans baskets. What a blessing. You will be rewarded in heaven. There are crowns being stored up for you. All right. So look forward to that. Thank you, Ella, for bringing that and for giving us the opportunity to bless our veterans. Um, <coughs> thank you for all your prayers as uh, Thaddeus and I traveled. Uh, we had good stops along the way to visit with people. Uh, that we hadn't seen for a while. Um, I actually went to Oklahoma City to the college that I attended. Uh, it's not the same at all. <laughs> at all. And, and the kids that are attending there now are so much younger than the kids that attended when I was there. <laughs> I felt like I was walking in junior high. Um, but we did have a blessed time visiting with uh, friends that, that I've not seen in years. Um, good time down with the family in Houston as we celebrated Justin's life. Um, good time visiting with other family that was able to come in as well. Uh, thank you for your prayers on the way home. Um, there was supposed to be a huge storm in Denver uh, the day that we were to drive into Denver. Uh, there was, but by the time we got there, it was it was pretty much done. Um, roads were great until we got to the north side of Colorado Springs, and then from Colorado Springs to well, I can't even say my driveway because that wasn't shoveled either. <laughs> the roads were sketchy in places. So thank you for your prayers. God brought us safely through. Um, can anyone explain to me the rationale? behind a nation of people that celebrates on one day all that God has given us and his many blessings, and then on the next day goes out and fights for whatever the new hot item is. Yeah. Yes. Um, for those of you that did your Christmas shopping on Black Friday and got good deals, God bless you. Um, we, we actually took our grandkids to see a movie on Black Friday. And we, Benjamin, uh, they have a big van, so all of us were in the van. And as the kids were coming out, people kept looking, because it was kind of like a clown car. Because <laughs> they just kept coming. And, uh, and they've got this new thing, um, well, I don't know how, how new it is, a new to me thing where you buy all your tickets online and you get to pick whatever seats you want to sit in, and except the ones that are always, already taken, I guess, because they wouldn't let me choose my seat. So, uh, And I do have a seat in every theater that's my seat. I just don't like change at all. Um, but as we were coming in, I, I had this little piece of paper and I had a little square doohickey on it and the guy pulled out his phone and he bleeped it and he said, okay, come through and, and, and they just kept coming. <laughs> and uh, God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. Um, this, this young squire, he, he had to go Black Friday shopping with mom. Um, he, he didn't get to go with Papa to the movie. 
And, and that was probably a good thing because it was Thaddeus and I and Christopher volunteered to come with us. And uh, with as many people as were in the theater, three was not enough. Um, the kids were well behaved, except their children. And children are like, ooh, what's that? And, and all of a sudden you're going, we had seven, now we have four. <laughs> um, we, we took them to a toy store. I don't know whose idea that was. <laughs> um, I really don't, because I was at the end of the line, and I could see down the hall they were all taking the right turn. And I, oh no, I'll never get them out. <laughs> and and so I was standing at the door as they were coming out. One, two, three, four. Okay, there's four adults. We only had three adults. One, two, three, four, five, six grandkids. Oh wait. Cohen was standing stock still. He was not moving. His eyes were about this big as he looked up at a wall of toys. <laughs> <laughs> Cohen! <laughs> Cohen! <laughs> hey! That got his attention. Then they have this goofy thing in the mall out there in Bozeman. There's this big flat spot on the floor and it shows pictures and the kids can step on the pictures. And, and I don't know what happens because I didn't step on the pictures. But my grandkids were having a great time. Running around and jumping and standing and stomping and, and they, they drove off about four other kids with their exuberance, I'm sure. But um, yeah, and, and then the, the shoppers actually made it there and my responsibility was done. <laughs> All right, you're here, they're your kids, your problem now. Um, but it was, it was a good day. Um, and I agree, why do we only give thanks on one day? Uh, scripture calls us to be a people of thanksgiving, to be a people who are ever mindful of the incredible blessings that God has poured out on us. I mean, starting off with just the, the things that we have. We have so much. We have so much. God has blessed us so abundantly uh, to be living here in America, the freedoms that we have. Um, and then you get to the serious things uh, that we can come boldly before his throne of grace in our time of need. That we can stand before God with imputed righteousness, a righteousness that is not mine, it is not yours. It is the perfect son of God's righteousness. And, and God looks at us and he sees us through that filter. That we, our sins are washed. They're washed away. Um, that God would even consider to pay attention to one of us, mm -hmm. to any of us. The creator of the universe, who by his very word holds all things together, that he would look at that little blue dot and find us. <coughs> and if you're not thankful for that, I don't think you know who he is and who you are. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, every day, challenge yourself every day to give thanks. Um, today's message is going to be a little short. Today is actually going to be a teaching time. Uh, not that I preach very often, um, but I do. Th this is going to be more like a class rather than a, a service. Um, we're going to go over some uh, Greek words. Uh, and I've got to kind of back up just a little bit to get everybody caught up on the same place. Um, several weeks back, um, we looked at um, who we are in Christ. <coughs> we read in First Peter that uh, we are a chosen people, a holy nation, uh, royal priests. Um, we are 
something that has only once been before in the, 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 the history of this world. We're, we're chosen by God. Okay? And so we, we looked a little bit further in that, and we see that within the body of Christ, there is no separation between clergy and laity such that there are two classes of people. Okay? And if you've come out of a, a, um, a more traditional church, you'll note that they have the, the clergy and the laity, and, and there's like various steps in between, but there's a different, definite line of demarcation between the two. Okay? Um, that you won't find in scripture without twisting the word to fit, okay? Um, Hebrew Bible, absolutely, absolutely. Because out of all the people in the world, God chose Israel. And it wasn't just to bless Israel, and it wasn't because they were a great people. God chose them because they were a weak people that through them he might demonstrate himself to the world, okay? And then within the tribes of Israel, he chose uh, Levi to be uh, the caretakers of uh, the presence of God, the tabernacle, and later the temple. Uh, and from the tribe of Levi, he chose Aaron and Aaron's descendants to be the priests and the high priest. Um, and, and we see that God has organized it this way. Uh, when God first called Israel, he called the entire nation to be priests, okay? Um, and that's, I think, significant when we look at 1 Peter 3, and he calls us um, a royal priesthood, because we only see a royal priest in, in one, one uh, instance throughout Scripture, uh, because the line of royalty came through Judah, and the priests came from Levi. Okay, but in Jesus Christ, uh, the book of Hebrews tells us that we have a high priest who is in every way better than the Aaronic priesthood and the, and the high priest uh, that came down through Aaron. And, and that Jesus Christ, who is of the line of Judah, who is a descendant of David, um, has fulfilled in himself both offices. Now we wait to see that played out because we're we're bound up in time and well some of us are more bound to time than others uh, some people just laugh at time and, and show up when they show up um, but we're still that we're only given a number of dates okay so everything in our lives is marked by time in some manner but God exists outside of time okay so he sees all things at once now how he can do that I don't know uh, the fact that I couldn't keep track of seven kids for you know two hours proves that I am in no way qualified to be God. Um, you got to wonder about the wisdom that I had entering entering into that. Uh, I, I I questioned my own wisdom at points, so uh, or or lack thereof. Um, but then we see that God has called us to be a royal priesthood because we are of the line saved under Jesus Christ, okay? So we are the children of God, right? Okay, we are co-heirs with Jesus Christ, okay? Oh, I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna say that again because the excitement that you guys have is completely <laughs> underwhelming, okay? We are the children of God, Amen. okay? And if that doesn't pump you up, let me know because I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> okay? We are co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, there's two sides to that coin, though. Paul says, I want to know him not only in the, the joy of his resurrection, but also in the fellowship of his suffering. suffering. Okay? Um, he's not sure about the suffering. Um, so, now... Within the body of Christ, and if you are a believer, you are a part of the body of Christ, okay? You have been given the right to be called a child of God. You are engrafted into the vine. You are a part of the body. Now, how well you function in that role 
uh, that, that really depends on your relationship with God, how much you are willing to, to embrace the things that he has called you to and, and to act on the things that he has called you to. All right? Some are very efficient at being their body part. Others, not so much. Um, so I'm going to give you some, some words. Now, within the body of Christ, uh, we do see that there are two positions that are called. Uh, the first one, we actually see Jesus calling them. He, he took about, out of all of his disciples, he took 12 and made them what? Apostles. Now, when Jesus died and the, the church was getting, uh, just getting birthed, uh, we see in, in uh, Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2, um, we see that, that God is building a new thing. And then we see that uh, life interjects itself into the church. Okay, And life happens. Whether or not you like it is irrelevant. Life happens. Uh, and there, I mean, there are just certain things in this life that are unavoidable um, for some of us. Um, for, for others, uh, you know, I, I watch my kids and I watch them wrestle and move and be active. And, and, and uh, I think, I don't think I'd be able to get out of bed the next day. And they're popping up like, okay, let's go. You sore? No. Okay. <laughs> um, but life interjects itself into what we're doing, doesn't it? I mean, wouldn't it be great if we could live in that moment where we feel the presence of God in us and about us? And, and we didn't have to worry about things like bills or pills or taxes, or any of that. But life happens, and I think that is the true uh, test of maturity for the believer in how much that, that life interjects itself into us, we handle with grace and with equity, that, that we allow it to mold us and shape us. So within this, we see that the, uh, the Greek women were coming and complaining. Now, Greek in the New Testament, it doesn't just mean Hellenists. It doesn't just mean people from Greece. It, it means the world, those that are not Jewish. Okay? So in the New Testament, you'll see this. In, in the Old Testament, uh, there were different ways that they were used, um, the seven nations and, and different things that were used to describe non-Jews. In the New Testament, it's almost always given to us in the term Greeks. So when Paul says there is neither male nor female, <coughs> bond nor free, Jew nor Greek, he's saying Jews and everybody not Jews. Okay. So um, the Greek women were coming because they were not getting their allotment of food uh, because it was being distributed to the, the Jews first. And they brought this before the apostles, and the apostles went, this, this really is not where we should be focusing our energy. This, this is not where we are supposed to spend our time. What were they supposed to be doing? There were two things. Oh, come on, be bold. Preaching and praying. Preaching and praying, okay? Be bold even if you're wrong. You know, when, when uh, years ago when I sang, um, I had a teacher that said, um, sing boldly, and if you sing wrong, sing wrong boldly. Okay? And uh, don't be afraid to get an answer wrong. That's how we learn. Okay? So, to preach and to pray, that was their focus. This is the apostles. Their, their ministry, their calling was to preach the word and to spend time in prayer. So, they said, well, hey, pick from among yourselves seven men and give to them this charge. Okay. And what we see happening is that seven qualified and godly men were chosen. Okay. Now, from here out, I'm just telling you what I think, what I see. Okay. There are going to be people that are going to disagree. They're going to say, no, I think it's this way. And that's a that's okay. That's, that's okay. 
because um, none of us are going to get it all right. All right. Uh, what I am going to do is share the word as I believe God has given it to me. Okay. So if I step on toes, get some ice. Okay. I'm not attempting to offend anyone. All right. So here we go. What I believe in chapter six of Acts in this this portion of the, the early church, we see the establishment of two groups of people, okay? We see the apostles who are called to preach and to pray, and we see uh, what became the, the deacons, the, the diaconos, the table waiters, the servants, who are every bit as qualified before God to lead as the apostles. By the way, I need to clar clarify one thing. Um, there are many people that say that there are no apostles today. Because of the requirements laid out when they were choosing someone to replace Judas, one of the requirements was that um, the new apostle had to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and been in the ministry with the others, okay? And so some people today say, well, the, the, the uh, office of apostle died out when the last of the disciples or the, the original apostles died off and, and, and were graduated into heaven. I don't believe that. I, I Because we tend to transliterate words in scripture, uh, because apostle is not an English word, it's actually a transliteration of apostolos, which is the Greek word, okay? Uh, and, and then we've taken that and, and we've ascribed meaning to it, okay? Um, so, in this uh, apostle, um, in the Greek, the word apostolos means a delegate, a messenger, or one sent forth with orders. Now, um, Paul defends his apostleship in numerous books. He was not one of the original twelve. He was not even selected to replace one of the twelve. As a matter of fact, he wasn't even in the running. Okay, uh, At the point when Jesus was going about in his ministry on earth, um, Paul was busy being a, a good Pharisee. As a matter of fact, he says, I was advancing beyond my years. Uh, meaning that, that he was excelling far beyond those of his own age. Okay, So... Paul, at that point being Saul, was, was not even in the running. As a matter of fact, at the point that, that they're selecting, he's actually a persecutor of the church. Uh, he, he believes that they are an affront to what God has called for the Jewish people. Okay. Now, as he goes uh, on the road to Damascus, uh, he encounters Christ. His life is changed dramatically. So much so that, that uh, the believers don't really believe that he is actually changed. Um, and he even calls himself the uh, last of the apostles as one untimely born. Okay? But we see other apostles in scripture that are not the original twelve. And, and we don't see, we don't know whether or not they served uh, or, or went with Jesus in, in any part of his earthly ministry. Uh, Barnabas being one. Um, Timothy later is called an apostle. Um, so what, what we've done is we've, we've taken a broad definition and we've narrowed it down beyond what it needed to be. Now there are the 12 apostles and, and uh, scripture says that uh, they have a particular place in heaven equal to that of the 12 tribes, okay? So for them, there is a different, uh, a different calling in heaven. But we see that there are other apostles. Now, do any of you know anyone that is, is a delegate or a messenger or somebody that has been sent forth with orders uh, whose primary task is to preach and to pray? All of us. <laughs> yeah, in some degree, all of us. Every single one of us, okay? Um, uh, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to flip here real quick. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Um, I 
So we see the establishment in the early church. We see that there are apostles, and we see that there are deacons. Um, now, in this calling, is this a calling of value? <clears throat> Meaning, do these people have more valuable, or are they more valuable to God than others? No. No. There, 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 I mean, I just quoted that scripture, that there is no classification. There is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female. There, 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 is, there is no, how can you measure a God who is infinite and who is love, therefore infinite love, how can you quantify that in any way and say God loves me more or God loves you less or me less or how can we quantify that because it's infinite love, okay? So, um, these are positions within the body of Christ called to specific tasks. Now, let me broaden that out just for a moment. If you are in the body of Christ, you are called to a particular task, a particular place, a particular position. Okay? In the body of Christ, you know, what happens if you quit exercising and continue eating? Let's just say the same amount that you were when you were exercising. Let's just leave it there. What happens, what changes do your body, does your body go through when you, you just stop exercising? You get out of shape. You get out of shape. Round is a shape. <laughs> Pear is a shape. Um, grapes are a shape. Our body goes through changes, doesn't it? Now, now, when most people quit exercising and they let that go, they don't keep eating. They don't stay on the same diet. Typically, what happens? They go back to the way they were eating before. Then what happens to your body? It gets bigger. It swells. It... You get fat. Okay? Now, apply that same logic to the body of Christ. If you are in the body of Christ and you are not exercising, you are not doing the things that lead to a healthy Christian lifestyle, what happens to you? You get fat and lazy. Okay? And what happens to the muscles that are still working with all that extra, the extra weight? <coughs> they, they shut they, down. They, got the, you, they, they shut down or you got to work harder. It was a whole lot easier for me to run uh, when I was 145 pounds. I don't weigh 145 pounds anymore. And running takes a lot more out of me than it used to. Okay? In the body of Christ, if you are not engaged in what he has called you to, now, now don't get me wrong, there is a time where you may need a season of rest, where you need to be ministered to predominantly instead of ministering predominantly. Every one of us needs those times. Jesus needed those times. Alright? Jesus always took one day out of the week where he did no regular work. He also took time away from the ministry and he would separate himself from, even at times, even from his disciples, even from the, the intimate three and, and from John. And he would go off by himself. And he would spend time with God. He would refresh. He would re-energize. He would reconnect. He would come back ready and equipped to do the work that was laid before him. Okay? Every one of us needs those seasons. But if that season has become your life, you need a little kick in the patoot. Okay? You do. Uh, because you need to get exercising in the body of Christ. Okay? So not a difference of value, a difference of position. Unfortunately, in uh, our world, we see that position as being value, but that is not so in God's economy. All right, um, so we see the two that are called the apostles. We see the deacons. Now, getting over to Ephesians chapter 4, uh, I want to talk about a couple of the gifts that are listed in here. Um, we've gone over this, this passage before, so I'm just going to pick up... Um, 
in verse 11. <coughs> Uh, it says, and, now if we see a conjunction at the start of a sentence, what do we need to do? We need to back up and read what was before it. I challenge you to do that. And he, being Jesus, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers. Uh, some of you might have pastor in place of shepherd. Uh, actually, in, in uh, some lines of thinking, uh, shepherds and teachers is, is one office. I, I personally, I don't believe that. I, I don't. I believe it's two separate offices <coughs> because I have seen men work that are gifted teachers, but they don't relate to the flock. They have a hard time being a shepherd. And I've seen men who have a heart for the, the flock and, and they are good shepherds, but they, they struggle to teach. Okay. So I, personally, I believe these are two separate offices. So we see uh, that he gave the apostles, apostolos, those who are sent, uh, a delegate, uh, and then we see uh, the prophets. Now, also, some people get really weird about this. Um, they see this as being an order. Um, that might have been uh, at some point in the past, but I don't see that anywhere else in Scripture as, as far as the apostles being over the prophets being over the... Um, I've actually been in uh, two churches where somebody took that interpretation of Scripture and declared themselves to be something earlier in the list and then required that the pastor would submit himself under their authority. Okay? Laugh, but that's what happens. That's how churches split. That's how churches stumble. Okay? Uh, because we've got to remember in whatever position that he's called us, whatever position that he's called us, he has called every one of us to be humble. Okay? Leadership in the body of Christ, leadership in the church should always be servant leadership. Okay? Always. We see too many churches <coughs> where people get into positions of authority and they expect everybody to serve them or serve under them. Uh, but it starts at the top. Okay? On the, the, the last night that Jesus, uh, before he went to the cross, he laid this down for us when he washed the disciples' feet. He said, you see what I've done? Okay? If you want to be great in the kingdom of God, you've got to be a servant. Okay? So whatever our position, we understand that we do this with humility because it's not us that we're representing, it's him. Okay? So keeping that in mind, and I, I know every one of you, every one of us, can point to people and, and times and situations that did it wrong, okay? But the point of this is to help us do it right, all right? Um, so, uh, first it was uh, apostles, apostolos. Uh, the second one is prophets, and this is uh, the Greek word, ironically, is prophetess. Prophet s, not like as in female, as in Greek es. Um, this is an interpreter of oracles or other hidden things, or one who, moved by the Spirit of God, and hence uh, as his organ or spokesman, solemnly declares to men what he has received by inspiration. Uh, this can include uh, the revelation of future events. Now, um, I'm, I want to just qualify this here. I believe absolutely that there is a position in the body of Christ today that is a prophetic office. Okay? If you challenge yourself and you read through the, the uh, books of prophets uh, in the Bible, you will find that while some of them gave much foretelling of things that were to come, um, most of them did foretelling, meaning that they spoke on behalf of God to people. Okay? They, they weren't about so much uh, what's coming uh, you know, a thousand years from now, they were more, hey, look, God is calling you to this. You failed this. If you don't write this ship, it's going to sink. Okay? So I believe that there is an office of prophet today. There are several men that I believe uh, fulfilled that office and, and are fulfilling that office. Okay? But it's, it's not as much speaking of future events. It can be. Okay? But it is about being the voice of God to the people of God. Okay? And, and um, one of the things that uh, I absolutely believe is that a prophet need never tell anyone that he's a prophet or she. Um, 
that will be taken care of in the natural course of fulfilling the ministry that God has called them to. Okay? Um, so, we have the apostles who are delegates, those who are sent with a message. Uh, we have the prophets who can either be foretelling or forthtelling, but they are the ones that uh, give unto the church what they receive by inspiration from the Holy Spirit. Uh, then we see evangelists. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this in the Greek. Uh, this, again, is another word that was transliterated. Uh, what it means is a bringer of good tidings. Not Santa Claus. <laughs> okay? A bringer of good tidings. Now, let's, let's put that into Christian ease. An evangelist is someone who <coughs> brings the good news. Brings the good news. Shares the gospel. Now, we are all called to that ministry, to that, that uh, commission, but there are those that are called to that office that that's their focus. They, they can't seem to operate outside of that because they're so focused in on this particular calling, okay? And it's an amazing thing to watch them work, okay? Uh, we have at least two men here in the church that I know are called to this. I don't know that they ever gave it a thought. They're just doing what God has put before them to do. Okay? So, evangelists. Uh, the, the next one, shepherds. This is poimen. And this literally means a shepherd. Okay? They're the ones that look over the flock. They're the ones that watch. Now, this is actually a little bit unique in the way that it's presented. Because when Jesus was talking about shepherds, he said, I am the good shepherd. And, but what did he say about his sheep? They know his voice. They follow him. So uh, a shepherd isn't so much um, uh, like the man that's walking around with the crooked <laughs> stick as he is the sheep with the bell on. Okay. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know why it works this way. God knows why he did it. But evidently, if you have sheep, you put a llama in with them. Because the llama will protect the sheep. Who knew? Well, now we do. Llamas are the goofiest looking creatures. They always look like they know something that you don't. <laughs> always. You know? The job of the shepherd is to take care of the flock. And sometimes that means moving sheep back into safe areas. Okay? Sometimes it means making sure that they're fed and that they're watered, making sure that their well-being is taken care of. Okay? So that's the fourth one. The fifth one, uh, excuse me. Uh, Pastors and teachers, uh, this is didaskalos, and, and that word's didactic. Does anybody know what didactic means? Be brave. It, it means to teach. Somebody that shares wisdom, somebody that shares knowledge. Okay? Um, in the New Testament economy, in the New Testament church, a, a teacher is one that is able to expound on the things of God to people in a manner in which they can receive and understand. Okay. Um, I had the, the pleasure of having a professor in school uh, who was on the NIV translation committee. And the man, there are very few people that intimidate me with their intelligence, but that man cowed me. He was so immensely smart. Um, but he couldn't teach well because he used $50 words and we had 10 cent ears, okay? I mean, he had an incredible wealth of wisdom and knowledge, but he couldn't relay it very easily to other people. Um, and you find that with very, very intelligent people, a lot of times they have a difficult time relating to those of us that are not as intelligent because th their mind moves much faster and in much different planes than ours do, okay? Not a good thing, not a bad thing, it's just a thing, okay? That's not a teacher, okay? Now, Dr. Waters would have been better off serving at the postgraduate level, okay? Because when, when you're wanting to learn 
uh, biblical languages and, and things of that nature. You're expected to have some form of some some framework within within which to operate. Um, but for those of us that are, you know, taking intro to Greek, well, I thank God that he was also a very merciful man. Okay? Um, so, a teacher is to teach, but they make the word of God understandable um, to the flock. Okay? So we see five positions. Now, one of the things that you will see that all of these have in common is that they all must be able to relay a word in some form or fashion such that the body of Christ can receive it. Okay? As we get into some of the other ministry gifts, um, we're going to see that we're going to see that some of the callings that people are called, some of the giftings that God uh, has placed in us don't require teaching. That's because we're not all teachers. Okay? They don't require a lot of, of being able to convey uh, particular aspects or theologies or doctrines. Some of them, uh, they, they just require that you show love. Okay? Uh, some of them require that you, you involve yourselves in doing things for other people. So, so, you know, we see this group right here. And next week we're going to deal with this a little bit more in depth. Uh, because I'm going to break this apart and we're going to see how these things start falling into place in the body of Christ and, and we're going to start getting into uh, Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12 and we're going to start seeing these things. Now has everybody here taken the uh, spiritual gifts test? If you haven't, put your hand up. All right, one, two, three, four. We need four, five. We need five of them up here. I, I want to encourage you to do this. I'm not going to ask to read them. I'm not going to grade you. Uh, I don't even want to see it. I this have, is I have a copy of it. Okay, you have a copy. Of it. All right. Okay, so All right, so you guys have copies of it? We're good? Okay. Uh, all I saw was Mike going at Cindy's head. And um still there. Yeah, her head is still there. Okay. So, do these. Now, keep in mind they're not foolproof. Um uh, I, I, I actually have another one that I actually like a little bit better, but it's only it's online, and I know some of you guys don't have access to be able to do those. Um, so this one it gives you a good idea. Um, be honest with it. Don't write down what you think you should answer. Write down who you are, how you are, um, because you know being dishonest. You know it, a lot of times people get put in places because they're not honest about their callings and their giftings. Uh, and the church is horrible about that. We see somebody that's excited and on fire, we go, <clears throat> and we stick them into a place that they really don't belong, and all of a sudden they're like, I have no joy. You know, because you're not in the place you're, you're supposed to function. Okay, so be honest. Um, as we get into these things, we'll, we'll start taking a look at how those things come out in the body of God and, and the types of things that in your life you should see already these fruits being worn out because when the Spirit gives them to you, you can't really help but move in that direction. Okay? All right? Okay. Father, we thank you for your grace and your goodness. We thank you, Father, for your word. I ask God that you...